people rejoicing. We're glad in it. We're glad about it. We're glad about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This is Maria Leslie back with you once again. Your soul, my soul does matter. And it's important that we keep in alignment, stay on top of everything that is going on in the earth. Uh-huh. In the earth, the exterior, mm -hmm. and what's working on the inside of us interior. It's important that we stay in proper alignment. Amen. And in touch with ourselves and how we're responding uh -huh, to the world. Uh, the people of the Lord, the people of the Lord, uh, we are in the world, but not of the world. And there's so much going on with the current events and the news that we are getting uh, from our headquarters in Washington, D.C. and, and uh, around the world with the different various things that are happening. And there's so many moving parts and it's impossible to keep up with all of them. So what do you do? You keep up with yourself and make sure that you, my God, are participating aright, that you are in proper alignment, that you understand who you are. Uh -huh. As people of God, as believers and saints, uh -huh, that's why I call you uh, my beloved sisters, brothers, saints, and my darling friends, believers in Christ Jesus. That's why I refer to you as that. Uh -huh. That's who you are. And that's how we are to respond to the world in every way possible mm -hmm. so that we don't uh, get emotionally um, uh, hyped up. Um, uh -huh. Don't get emotionally hyped up and, and don't allow yourself to sink low. Don't allow yourself to uh, become overwhelmed with news that are coming from our news reels and sound bites, presidential elections. And there's a lot of elections that's going on in the various uh, reformations around the world. Uh, things are changing. They're shifting. Uh, the organizational chart is yet in transition and there are moving pieces. Now you have to know how to flow in and out of it. How do you come into a place? How do you go out of a place? How do you come in before a people? How do you come out from their presence? Uh, it's very important that we understand that. And the Lord, of course, there's a word. There is a word. And I'm so grateful and thankful to the Lord that I am attuned uh, to how he deals with me. So therefore, I don't have to walk in anyone else's lane. I don't have to cross in anyone else's lane. I can stay right in my lane and do what it is that the Lord has assigned me to do. And that is to remind us that your soul matters. What would a man give in exchange for his soul? Your soul is so invaluable, so invaluable to the point uh, that no, there is no price. Your soul is priceless. The Bible says, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What would you give for that? Your mind, will, and emotion, all the God pieces, individual, invisible pieces that the Lord has given to us to navigate this world, to even be overcomers of this world and all the vicissitudes of it. Mm -hmm. You have power to be overcomers. Now, what is the word today? <sighs> the seven eyes of God. And listen, we are coming to the latter part of the seventh month, which has been tagged as a month of freedom, as a month of liberty. And for various reasons, you can research why it has been tagged as the month of freedom, the month of liberty. But the most important part um, that we must do is to walk in those freedoms, walk in that liberty. And with everything that's going on, you could easily be wrapped, tied, and tangled up and not experience the freedom at all. Now, as I was just 
in my meditation time, uh, giving attention to the Lord and seeking his face, not for a word for you. No, that's not what I do. I'm seeking to be a better Maria each and every day. I'm seeking the face of God. I want to please him. Listen, I'm satisfied with Jesus, but it's so important that he be satisfied with me. And that's what I am in pursuit of, is making sure that my works are satisfactory before the Lord. I want to hear him one day, not today, <laughs> and if tomorrow comes, not tomorrow, but one day I want to hear the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, a few things. Now, let me make you ruler over many. That is what I'm seeking the Lord for. Now, the seven eyes of God is not spooky. Why? Because the Lord is a spirit. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here we go with that liberty piece. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is a liberty. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. The eyes of the Lord is in every place. Uh-huh. Let's go ahead and go to that. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That is Proverbs 15 and 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place uh, beholding uh, the evil and uh, the good. Uh -huh. The first part of that chapter, uh, it says to us, and this is how we have to conduct ourselves in a world where it seems like men are just mean, not just men, but women, my God. Uh, that takes us back to the last video. Uh -huh. So let's go to the first part of the 15th chapter of Proverbs, the King James Version of the Bible, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. You could be ever so right, my God. You could be ever so right, but it's the way you present your side of your point of view, your argument, uh-huh, uh, uh, how you want to deliver what it is that you're saying is how you present it that makes it acceptable because you're not wanting to stir up anger in anyone, not in these days and times. Why? Because you don't know what people are going through. You don't know uh, uh, what one word goes back to that that podcast that was released just a couple of weeks ago. Uh-huh. A word spoken in season are like golden apples placed in silver vases. That's what we want. We want to be able, my God, to get uh, uh, the right response once the word has been delivered. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise is used, uses knowledge aright. The tongue of the wise useth the knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the focal point of this scripture that we are going for, talking about the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. We want to make sure that we are not using our mouth for evil, but rather for good, to bring calm to that soul that may be disturbed or conflicted. We want to make sure that we are not playing the part uh -huh, of messing up anybody's life or laying another log on an already messed up soul or a conflicted soul. We want to make sure that our uh, uh, involvement with humanity is serving for good. Why? Because my soul matters, your soul matters, our soul matters. The soul of the United States of America right now is in utter chaos from coast to coast, from the East Coast to the West Coast, uh huh, from the West Coast back to the East Coast, uh huh, from the North to the South, from the South to the North, utter confusion. A lot of things are happening. All these different opinions of man uh -huh, are being displayed right now. Now you have to anchor your soul. What 
is your moral compass? What do you believe? Well, believe this, if you don't believe nothing else, that the Lord sees and he knows. Mm -mm. He knows all things. There are nothing, there is nothing that's going on in this world right now that he's not aware of, but he gave the world back to us uh -huh, to manage, to steward over nothing that's going on in this world right now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Unless it's good, it's God. <laughs> when he handed it over to Adam and Eve, everything was good, 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 good. And then when he made man on the sixth day, it was very good. Then he handed it over to Adam and Eve, uh-huh, uh-huh. Then, my God, once they messed up, uh-huh, he found a solution to bring us back to that Eden experience once again. And he sent his own son down through 40 and two generations to make sure that goodness will be in the world. And I want you to know, when he sent his son, he, he allowed the angels to proclaim that peace <laughs> be on the earth and goodwill toward men. That's how he feels about us. Uh huh. And look, I want you to know that the eyes of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord, uh huh, they're in every place. Yes, there are seven eyes uh -huh, of the Lord. What does that mean? Completion. Mm. Completion, totality. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There's nothing that the Lord does not see. Uh-huh, those seven eyes of the Lord, they run to and fro throughout all the earth looking for faith, uh-huh, looking for believers, looking for those people who have committed to themselves to him. Rather, you are having a tough time or not. Just know that the Lord, he sees you. The Lord knows all about it. Yeah, yeah. And he, uh, he's not uh, obligated to respond to uh, a pity party. In fact, there's seldom times that he, uh, if he's there at a pity party, he's seldom saying anything. He's waiting for the praises to break forth. Uh huh. That I will bless the Lord at all times, <laughs> and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That means you putting your total trust in Him, and regardless of what's going on throughout the world, you know that God knows. He sees you, and He knows uh, all things. There is nothing hid from our God, and He, uh huh, He will step in right in on time. The seven eyes of the Lord represent the seven spirits uh, of God. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The seven eyes of the Lord represents the seven spirits of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these spirits are are, are uh, the spirit of God. Uh-huh. Wisdom. Uh, knowledge. Understanding. Uh-huh. 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 Omniscience. Uh-huh. Omniscience means he has, he's all knowledgeable, all knowledgeable, omnipresent, meaning he's right there. I heard David when he said, where shall I go to flee from the presence of the Lord? There was no place that David could go and flee from the presence of the Lord. And I want you to know, my brothers and my sisters, there's no place that you can go and flee from the presence of the Lord. Why? He is right there. He was there all the time, waiting patiently in line. And there are times when he actually does withdraw himself. He pulled back just to see, are you going to operate in faith or are you going to operate in fear? There is a time, and these are the times that come to try men's soul. And we have to make sure that we are uh, conducting ourselves properly. And when you have a good rain on your soul, that's when you're tempered and you're very concerned about how you respond. You're very concerned about how you respond. Uh huh. And then when we go to the book of Revelations, the book of Revelations, uh huh, it is uh, the fifth chapter. Yes, the fifth chapter, we're talking about the seven eyes of the Lord. And it is no wonder we're in the seventh month. We're in the seventh month. Uh, yes, yes, we're in the seventh month. And uh, 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 
it's the halfway mark of the year. And we are at the tail end of the month. And we may not have started the month off correctly. I hope that we have, but we certainly can end it. We can auto correct it. We can do a U-turn if we have not properly handled this month because the Lord is concerned about how we handle each and every day. Do we wake up in the morning realizing that the eye of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord, plural, plural, the eyes of the Lord, plural, the eyes of the Lord, P-L-U-R-A-L, plural, the eyes of the Lord, they are watching you. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. I'm not going to leave myself out. The eyes of the Lord are watching me. In the midnight hour, the eyes of the Lord, they're upon us. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, beholding the evil and the good. There's so much evil in the world. And if we're not very careful, my sisters and my brothers, we'll find ourselves operating like the world operates. And we will use the excuse where everybody's doing it. My God, that means our integrity needs another check, a health check on our integrity. Uh huh. And because everybody else is doing it, and first of all, that's not true. The Lord will always have a remnant. The Lord would always have a remnant. There is he has 7,000. That's just a small number. And this is about the, the, uh, the ratio. <laughs> he has 7,000 who have not bowed their knee uh -huh, uh -huh, to Baal. They have not bowed their knee to idols. Because first of all, we love the Lord. Second of all, we realize that we can't make it with him. How in the world do you expect to make it without him, especially in the environment and the temperament of this world that we're living in? How do you expect to make it without the Lord, especially in this environment and the temperament that it's in this world? And it's coming from the top. It's coming from the top. Uh -huh. The reason why people are, are full of road rage, they're full of... Uh, spilling, of spewing uh, uh, blasphemy and venom coming out of their throats and putting it into the atmosphere. It's because it's coming from the top. It's coming from the top. Even in our pulpits, sometimes, uh, uh, rather than preaching the gospel, we're saying a whole lot of cruel, mean things to the people of God and that's the last thing we need. We need the gospel, the glorious gospel, the transforming gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be put out into the atmosphere and in the hearts of the men and women that come to gather around the church or gather in the congregation of the righteous. We need to hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what we need. That's what we need Uh huh. to make it. Mm-hmm. Why? Uh -huh. but, but see, here's why. Because uh, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world is doing what the world does. <laughs> the world is doing what the world does. By hook or crook, uh -huh. uh, they, they are determined to win. If they have to lie, cheat, and steal, they intend to win. And you may win. You may win, you may win, but I'm telling you, my sisters and brothers, that includes me. Don't think I'm leaving myself out of this. <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no. I may get by, you may get by, but you won't get away. There is going to come a day of reckoning. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord, mm, he sees us and he's judging us aright. He's judging us aright. Let me... Take a peek here over into the book of Revelations, the fifth chapter, which I've already mentioned to you that I'm going there. And let's just start at that fourth verse. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, 
the root of David, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Mm -hmm. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and 20 elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Oh my God. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our kings, unto our God. Let me read that correctly. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Jesus Christ, who is the lamb, the lamb, Jesus Christ, who is the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world has done all the hard work. Uh -huh, and everyone that's accepted him as personal Lord and savior, you are considered kings and priests. And that is not a gender word. It's gender neutral. It's gender neutral. It goes for mankind and humanity. Uh huh. And we're supposed to be reigning on the earth right now, realizing that the Lord has our back. The seven eyes of God are upon you. And if you go to the book of, if you go to if you go to the book of Zechariah and the word that was spoken unto Zerubbabel, you realize that you are fully furnished mm -hmm, with oil and fire in the Holy Spirit because uh, it's not by might, nor is it by power, nor is it by, uh, 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 it's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. This is the only way that we're going to accomplish this job uh -huh, is by the spirit of God. And we have to realize, uh, this is not to make you paranoid or afraid. This is not to become spooky or, or, or weird. Uh -huh. We don't even use those words when it comes down to righteousness, holiness, uh -huh, living right, living true. Uh, there's someone that wants to pervert the church and, and make us a bunch of idiots. But I want you to know, that the people of God, believers in Christ Jesus, the saints of the most high God are the most intelligent people on the earth. Why? Because we have that sixth sense, which is called the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And if you're not a believer, mm -hmm, uh -huh, I want you to know that you're missing out. You're living beneath your privilege and you need God uh -huh, to fill you with the Holy Spirit so that you will have that sixth sense and you have an uh, ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. And right now the Spirit is saying unto, unto the church that there are seven eyes of God. Seven eyes. Jesus Christ uh -huh, uh -huh, in the spirit realm have seven eyes and its completion, its fulfillment uh -huh, is to let you know that there is nothing that he will not accomplish for you. There is nothing that he will not accomplish for you. Nothing that the Lord God will not accomplish for you because he sees you and he knows you. He knows the reins of your heart. He knows what it is that, uh -huh, that how your heart is toward him, how you love him. And regardless to how tough a time we may be having, uh, some of us are having tough times. Many of us, we have learned. <laughs> it's a valuable lesson to learn. That it doesn't even matter. We're under the blessings of God. We are winners. We can't lose. We're more than conquerors. We're God's children. We can't be refused. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. We can win a soul. We can reach our goal. 
because God said in his word, all things are possible and we can do all things through Christ. And yes, I'm a believer. Yeah. And so many of us, we can't tell a blessing from a cursing. Why? Because we are under the shadow of the almighty and he has us completely in his care. Uh huh. Even when you are hurt and wounded, one of the prophets just said on her lowest day, God bless you, evangelist and Zinnerman Alexander, for letting us know what God will do for you on your worst day. You're better than 10,000 because what God will do for you in those times when uh, uh seem like you, you can't, you can't see, you can't, you can't see for looking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't see your way. He will wrap you in his cocoon of love. I'm talking about the Lord God will wrap you in his cocoon of love. He will nurse, nurture you, build you up in your most holy faith. Uh huh. Uh, allow you, my God, to build yourself up in your most holy faith. Yes, yes, yeah. And when you come back out to face the people, you'll be stronger than you've ever been. Uh-huh. You will have the resilience. Uh, you will have, uh-huh. You will have that, 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 that blessedness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Blessed assurance <laughs> that Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. We're heirs of salvation, uh-huh, purchased by God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my savior, all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my savior all the day long. Remember, God is watching you. He sees and he knows. It. And uh, I may have brought a message some or, or, or delivered a podcast that's something similar to this, but this is a little bit deeper and you can actually go in and you can look for yourself uh, what uh, those seven eyes of God is all about. Do a research on it for yourself. The, the, the seven eyes of God, the seven eyes of the Lord represents his omniscience, mm -hmm. his, his divine providence. providence. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, no one can hide anything from him. God is sovereign to, and he continues to protect the righteous. Uh, these eyes of the Lord, they have a range over all the earth and not just over all the earth. He sees everything in the stratosphere, the, the atmosphere. Uh huh. He, he in in the in the he, in the constellations. He sees everything. There's nothing that's hid from him. Mm hmm. The seven spirits of God. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 It's a pillar of wisdom. Mm. Uh huh. Yeah. It's vision, divine vision. And may God. Uh huh. In this month, the seventh month of the year, may He give you divine vision that you may pick up uh -huh, uh, those things that are going to profit you, that your hands may be blessed and everything that you touch uh, may be blessed, that your feet won't stumble now, and that you'll be able to go up the seven steps of faith, my God, uh -huh, that you go seven up and not seven down, my God, uh, that you'll be on the highway, yeah, 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 to a prosperous life and a successful life in this earth, uh, and, and then when this earth is over, in the world to come, uh, that you will be victorious in everything that you do and everything that you say. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord, are, uh, he, he's, his eyes are upon you, and I want you to know this, my God, he knows everything that he put inside of you. He knew that you would be able to function even when things seem to be against you, when pressures mount upon you. He knew that you would be able to press through, to persevere because you're stronger. Mm -hmm. You're wiser. You're better. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. You've already been to through uh, pretty much the worst things that could have happened if that didn't kill you. <laughs> What do you have to worry about? Just keep on keeping on and realize that the Lord is with you. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. And look, as David said, it's just one step between me and death. He has been and will continue to be, my God, your protector from danger seen and unseen. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he sees and he has ministering angels right there, ready on the spot uh-huh, to uh, uh, 
see you through, to not allow what the enemy's plans and plots are for you to persevere. My sisters, my brothers, oh, I love you with the love of the Lord. And just realize your soul matters. My soul matters. And I hope that this has brought some clarity uh huh, and that you understand uh, that the eyes of the Lord are upon you. And he has great expectations for you to carry out all that he's put inside of you, those treasures that they may manifest and that you may have a successful, prosperous, healthy life. Amen. All right. Until next time. God bless you. Thank you.